Welcome to yet another edition of New Vision TV's Pearl of Africa Diaries with me, Ruth Nasege. And today we are at the Uganda Wildlife Education Center where we are going to look at various animals that are kept here at the zoo. Uganda Wildlife Education Center is located in Entebbe. At the open of UX Gates, the feel of the wild is first captured by the two giraffes standing with their necks high in the center of the compound. Getting inside lightens up the moment as visitors and the zoo guides are receptive. My first encounter was with Abdallah Katamba, a zoo guide, who took my team and I to the information center where bones of most animals that died from the zoo were kept. Some of the animal bones you see here were for animals that died when you work was still popular, known as the Entebbe Zoo. Originally, when the colonial government opened up the then popular Entebbe Zoo in 1952, the main objective was to help wild animals that were orphaned, sick, and even confiscated from illegal traders. But these hence changed in the early 1960s when its role changed to a rather traditional zoo that kept a collection of wild animals for study, conservation, and display to the public. At the time, Entebbe Zoo kept animals such as bears, tigers, among others. As time went by, the name Entebbe Zoo was turned into Uganda Wildlife Education Center, or UEC. This new establishment began running in May of 1994 to primarily engage in conservation education purposes. Well, it has been a long journey. Uh, it has not been very smooth. The zoo started in 1952 uh, as an animal orphanage actually. And then in the 1960s it became a traditional zoo where we used to have even exotic species of animals like tigers and bears. But as a result of the turmoil that Uganda went through, the zoo became run down until 1994. So in 1994, this center was re-established. The zoo was re-established as the Uganda Wildlife Education Center with support from the New York Zoological Society by then, which we call the Wildlife Conservation Society today. They helped us set up the master plan for this center. They helped us put up some of the infrastructure, but also with support from USAID and the World Bank. Those are some of the uh, facilities that you have seen that were set up, including the exhibits, the, ho the, 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 the homes or the holding homes or grounds where the animals sleep at night. So as a result of that, infrastructure was developed, staffing was carried out, a board of trustees was put in place. So it has been a combination of factors. UEC now keeps over 54 animal species. These include pythons, monkeys, baboons, elephants, birds, lions, cheetahs, and the list is endless. After a tour guide with Katamba, he handed us over to Dan Mirembe, a very courageous and knowledgeable gentleman on each and every animal kept here. Mirembe highlighted some of the facts about an ostrich. In Luganda, this animal is called a maya. They are also edible by some people. They are meat. If you can eat chicken, you can as well eat them. So another thing which is very outstanding about them, every animal has a defensive mechanism. That's what you have to notify. So the, only, the way how ostriches defend themselves is by kicking. And they have a strong kick. Its kick, if it is kicked on a very sensitive part of a lion, it can as well kill a lion. So that's why we don't take it for granted when we go inside there. 
Exploring animals went on from ostriches to zebras, but the most interesting animal I got to know better was a baby elephant known as Edward. This one is looked after by a zookeeper known as Bruce Tumwesije. Edward lives in a cage next to the National Referral Hospital for Wild Animals. He's just six months old. He got the name from a man called Edward who rescued him when he was just five days old. I gave Edward a bath, fed him with drinking water, but his main dish is SMA and a fresh dairy milk. 2.5 liters per meal. Okay. And we give him water too. It takes about 10 liters. Yes. And SMA, you know, it's a quite expensive milk and fresh dairy. But as the center, we try our best to make these animals survive because they're orphans. In a day, Edward is supposed to walk at least a few meters twice. So he decided to give him his first walk of the day. Through the forest, we walked and even opted for running. <laughs> what? After a few exercises with Edward, we met his elder sister, Charles. Her name was also good from Harris Cure. Feeding this six-year-old elephant was quite interesting and we all participated. Back, 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 back. Just back. No, I, I, he likes the... Just back, back. Back up. Back. Stop. Good. So you raise it up. Stay where you are. Don't move. Don't move. When you move, he's going to move. <laughs> Give him another one. This picture we want it on my coffin. From elephants, we had another encounter with a python. Too scared I was, but I managed to at least touch its skin. Other animals at the Uganda Wildlife Education Center we came across were lions, the king of the jungle. Even the cheetah, which were very peaceful, but Joseph Ogwang, their keeper, says they are very dangerous. Uh, this is Pian, and uh, that's Upe. Pian is the male, and uh, Upe is the female. The only two giraffes kept here were also adorable. These I had a chance to give a yellow banana to one. It was a male giraffe, according to Mirembe, and the other is a female. The male giraffe is called Seguya, and the female one is called Nile. They live with a few other animals in their cage. The shoebill was yet another interesting animal. Its beak is one of the reasons why it got the name shoebill, as Mirembe explains. Historic, and uh, it's known to be related to the dinosaurs. And uh, what makes it to be called the shoebill stock is because its bill is like a shoe. So that's where the name originates from. So you can either call it a shoebill stock or a blue well-headed stock. So they're in the same classification with the Malibu stock, uh, which is commonly known as Karoli and others. So we basically feed it on fish. And uh, their most preferred fish is lung fish. The center's location is on the edge of Lake Victoria, giving it an added advantage of fresh air all day throughout. Also, activities like swimming are offered here. The rich vegetation harbors birds and butterflies. These and more interesting reasons to believe that your work can offer any tourists, whether Ugandan or from overseas, the feel and closeness to the wild. Children are not left out. The best playground and a swimming pool for birthday parties or a school outreach are set up to give any child a memorable vacation. And to families or couples that want to spend a night at the zoo, flamboyant accommodation at a very affordable price.
The work executive director James Musinguzi hopes to make more innovations to have the zoo compete with other world class zoos. The aspect of Triple P, where we work with the public, we work through public private partnership where we can work with the private sector to develop some of these areas. We would like to have the Lake Victoria Tourism Circuit, for example. A boat should be able to, boat should be able to dock here mm. on our marina, which we are building, which we have seen, mm. and then they can go to the botanical gardens, then they go to Rotembe, from there they can go to Bulago Island, they continue to Ngamba Island, okay. and then back. So we do a circuit on Lake Victoria for families, for them to enjoy the lake. Our lake is, is, is mostly idle, as you have seen. So we need to develop marine tourism starting from here because you're able to come, park your vehicle, enjoy your lake, go back or even go through here and reach Luzira. So there are all those innovations. This explains why we work on the Pan-African Association of Zoos and Aquaria Championship Award 2017. The sky is definitely the limit here, so if you want to attest to this experience, come and have your story to tell. As I always say, the adventures never end on New Vision TV's Pearl of Africa Diaries with me, Ruth Naseje.